Here's why we've been uh, learning about trigonometry recently, and what we don't do here is we don't ever talk about cast diagrams, because I'm, I'm allergic to them, but we do talk a lot about the unit circle, and we do a lot of uh, using our memories and using our brains to work out uh, what the key values are of uh, sine 30, tan 45, and so on. Um, and we very rarely use calculators, actually, when we're doing trigonometry here. Um, so today we've just been doing some dead simple questions here and they, they are really simple but we spent a lot of time talking about them. We talked about how you can solve them using graphs, how you can solve them using the unit circle, what the sine function actually is, what it means. Um, and then we've talked about things like this and we spotted that sometimes you get positive and negative solutions and we thought about what that means geometrically and where you would find those solutions. Uh, we've talked about very simple equation again but then um, the students have worked out how they can describe all the possible solutions. So I haven't told them how to do that, they've figured it out themselves. And then we started to link the ideas that we've been using to quadratic functions. So actually, the equations that we've been solving have been very simple equations, but the connections that we've been making between different ideas hopefully uh, have been very useful and meaningful for students. Um, and then the students, um, they can be quite difficult, the students here, you know. So. Um, if I just, let me just get out of this, how do I escape from? So I have one student giving me a hard time about, well, what is the practical application of all of this stuff? Where will you ever use it? Because I think it's all just made up and artificial. Uh, and so I, I ended up having to defend my teaching by saying, well, there we go. There is a practical ap application of solving difficult trig equations. And I would use them to model tidal heights. Um, but we also had a bit of a discussion at one point when we were talking about things like uh, this equation here, well, what does that actually look like? Um, and so we argued about it for a bit and we decided it looked like a sine graph with some M's or W's in it. Uh, and then we checked on Desmos afterwards and Hannah was right and it did look like the way she described it. And you can see a bit left there from when we were talking about um, inverse functions in trig as well. we'll talk about that. So the approach is very much about geometrical significance of what we're doing, making connections between different ideas in mathematics and not teaching students methods to reproduce in exams, but teaching them understanding.